we want to consider now part six, which is the analysis portion, which is, of course, very text heavy and not very Excel heavy, if you will. But nevertheless, you need to put your answers in Excel, so we need to think a little bit about this. So let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet for just a second. Now, we want to think about a couple things. One, remember that always, 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 you want to make it so that it's easy for your instructors to figure out what they're looking at, where your answers are, etc., etc. Change the font size, make it really clear, make it clean, etc. Okay. Then we also want to help by labeling the portions. So let's say that portion we were just looking at was part three. This is part four, which is GDP distribution. And then this is part five, which is GDP graphs, right? And now we want part six. Let me put that in here. Part six, which is GDP analysis. You don't want to make it so that anything overlaps anything else. Move your graphs around. Move your tables around. Put things where they need to be so that you have plenty of space and it makes it easy for your instructor to figure out what's where and where all the answers are. And while I'm on the subject, when you save your file for the first time, it's a very good idea to save it with your name in it like, you know, Jane Doe, Project One, etc. Um, that way, the instructor, when they're looking at it, knows whose paper they're looking at, whose assignment they're looking at. Just a little tip. All right, so now we want to go down here to part six, and we're not going to be making a graph or a table. We need to write, and we need to write a lot. So now you could do this by typing in, you know, this is problem number one, blah, 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 and this is problem number two, blah, 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 right? But you're going to see the problem is that you're already running into issues with the whole filling in thing. Once you get longer than however wide this column is, it stops writing, you know, starts hiding it behind other cells. It just gets really annoying. And I say, let's not do it that way. Let's do it a better way. We're going to insert a text box. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button. I'm going to drag it down until I've made a nice big rectangle for myself. I'm going to lift up, and ta-da, I have a nice big rectangle. And you can change the sides of it if you see what I'm doing. I kind of move my mouse to this little corner over here, that little box, and I can make it left and right smaller. I go to the corners here and make it bigger or smaller, that kind of thing. And then I can type in here, number one, blah, 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 blah right? <laughs> then number two, Yada, 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 right? And so on. It is a very good idea to leave yourself space in between the problems. Now, let's say you've, number three requires a little bit of calculation. So then you could go over here into cell I45, and you could do that calculation equals 89 plus 22 divided by 4 plus 17, or whatever the heck it is you're doing. And you could say, oh, okay, this is 111.5 C cell I-45 for work, etc., etc., and so on. And if you like, you can even bold the numbers, make it very clear. I would definitely recommend having a blank space in between the problems. That way it makes it kind of obvious where each problem begins and ends, that kind of thing. And there you go. That's how to write up text in an Excel spreadsheet in such a way that it doesn't make the person reading it want to hurt somebody. Right? You always want to make it so that it's very easy and obvious for your instructors what the heck is going on and where your answers are. All right, now we're all done with all of this. Keep in mind that all of this would actually be on the same spreadsheet as these values here. That's okay. You just have more space in it somewhere. So you'll probably have those values up here and then the table over to the right or the table down below, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if they're not all on one spreadsheet, you can put them on two. Um, it depends on what's required by the project. So it, it doesn't really make much difference as long as it's really clearly labeled and everything is nice and neat and in its place. Oh, I take that back, actually. I just read the project real quick. It says to do this part, which is the mean, median, mode, all that stuff, in the same tab as the data set, and then to do this stuff on the GDP tab. So technically, they're supposed to be separated so that the, oopsie, the tab that has all of these pieces and parts is in a different area than the tab that has all this stuff, the table, the graphs, and the answers. So there you have that.
and we're all done with this portion. I'll see you back here for the mortality portion. We'll see some videos about that.